Hello, I'm Rachel Shackleton. Today I'm going to talk to you about anxiety. I'm going to cover the differences between anxiety and fear, uh, the symptoms that you might experience if you're experiencing anxiety, the triggers, because that's what helps us to understand why we're getting into this state, and finally some tips and tricks. So anxiety, um, I see more and more creeping into society, uh, both in the corporate environments and of course uh, with in individuals. Um, there is a difference between anxiety and fear because um, fear and a small level of anxiety will appear um, if you're under some kind of stress for a particular reason. So for example, if you're attending a job interview, we'd expect to be a little bit anxious about the result and how will I perform, etc. And this means that the body will react and help you to prepare for that. But at the end of that interview, you should go back to normal, to being normal, calm, uh, energetic self. Now, in the event that you don't go back to normal or that you find that you're experiencing um, anxious feelings, almost all day, every day, then we are looking at anxiety. All right, so, so anxiety can um, range from intense fear to, or from, from intense fear to unease, or from unease to intense fear. So what are the, some of the symptoms that you might experience? And these are by all means not all the symptoms. If you are feeling anxious on a uh, ongoing basis, uh, you might get shortness of breath. You might get feelings of uh, your heart racing. You might have hyperventilation if you really are in a very anxious state. Possibly you have strain in your neck and shoulders. Maybe you're getting headaches that you didn't used to have or muscle spasms or backache and we can also see things like dizziness, dry mouth, uh, sweating um, and in some cases even nausea and the need to urinate on a regular basis. Everybody has individual triggers and this is something that we have to understand that we're all unique and what is stressful for one person may not be stressful for another. However, there are certain factors that can increase anxiety in individuals and certainly diet and the food that we eat and the drinks that we take into the body can cause anxiety on a physical level. So all foods such as processed foods, which are not natural or real anymore because they've been highly processed, very often have preservatives, they have additives, and this adds stress to the body. It also means that the body is not getting the necessary vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that it needs to function in a normal way which means that the brain then starts to struggle to understand, to, to, to work effectively. And this puts um, anxiety on the emotional, uh, on the physical and also on the emotional levels. Um, when we look at sugary foods, sugary drinks, these will give what we call a quick sugar hit or a quick uh, sugar increase, which means that you get a boost of energy but at the end of that boost of energy, which is very short term, you then end up with a very big low. And the more you boost your energy temporarily by sugar, the more you're going to go lower and lower each time in that up and down uh, curve. We can also get anxiety from, or added to the, the mix from electromagnetic radiation. Um, the uh, digital world is very much with us and it's very helpful in forms of business, uh, for communicating with friends and so on and so forth. 
However, being constantly bombarded by electromagnetic radiation is very stressful for the body as a whole. All right, so of course we have other triggers, um, such as day-to-day -day living. We are all hit now and again by life's curveballs, whether they're financial, whether they're family issues, whether death of a loved one, uh, stress at work due to perhaps the company's not as stable as you thought it was, uh, maybe you're not sure if you're going to get promotion or not. These are all realistic things that go on in our day-to-day -day lives. And they, of course, also add to the stress on the mind and the body. So when we're in an anxious state, it means that actually we come out of the present moment. We are worried about what has happened, what might happen, what we think will happen. Uh, we talk around and around in our head. We might talk it out with other people, but we're actually not focusing on coming out of this anxious state. And this is particularly critical because it's actually that that helps you to form a plan, of action that will actually help you to move out of this anxious state or manage the situation better. Because certainly if we have sick family members, we can't necessarily have a strategy or a plan, but we can have a plan for helping us to manage it more effectively within ourselves. So clearly we need to have a few tips and tricks to help to manage our anxiety. These things don't replace the need for a medical doctor if your anxiety doesn't go away after doing some of these things. However, when we look at food, try to avoid all sugary items. So cakes, chocolate bars, sweets, fizzy drinks, um, and any other items that might be full of sugar. We also should cut out caffeinated drinks. So here we're talking about coffee, uh, to a certain extent tea, um, and again, the fizzy drinks, because caffeine again gives you this, this high and this low, which means you put more stress on the body to actually uh, cope on the physical level whilst you're trying to deal with the emotional level. Um, avoiding alcohol or minimizing alcohol is also a good idea. Very often we turn to that glass of wine, that gin and tonic, that beer to help alleviate the symptoms of our anxiousness and feel a little calmer. However, this is really a temporary fix and it's not going to help in the long term to drink alcohol. Try to take in a diet which is rich in magnesium, in omega-3 fish oils, and B vitamins. This means things like green leafy vegetables, um, all the seeds and nuts, flax seeds, chia seeds, various kinds of nuts. And also look at things like um, um, uh, food items rich in omega-3 such as avocado, oily fish, mackerel, trout, sardine, and so on and so forth. So limiting the anxiety uh, from a physical point of view, we also need to look at the mental. Mental, And we all know this word now, mindfulness. I'd rather use the word of living in the present. It, living in the present. When we're not living in the present, it means we're living in the past or we're living in the future. And that also doesn't help us with this pattern of creating more anxiety. Therefore, things like affirmations, doing your affirmation several times a day, such as, I love and approve of myself. I trust in the process of life. I'm safe. Are all good things to say to yourself over and over several times a day. Um, working with uh, specialized practitioners, such as NLP practitioners, counselors, is also extremely helpful to help you understand the pattern that you've created for yourself and how to come out of that pattern. I would also recommend movement and fresh air, getting out into nature. Nature is one of the most calming things that is free of charge and for most of us is fairly 
close by, even if you live in a city, there's usually a city park where you can go and sit under a tree or you could walk through the trees on your way to work or in your lunch hour or whatever it, it, it might be. Movement such as Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, football if you like, any kind of movement also helps us to, to manage our anxiety better. It helps the body to process things in a better way and it clears the mind by bringing in those natural endorphins which give us that feeling of things are good, things are positive.